Welcome to the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, October 27th, 2019, and what a great bullish run we're in. And I'm going to hand this over right to Miss Vegas, and she's going to give us for next week's watch list. Some to watch. Okay. Anyway. Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to talk about Tesla, Apple, CRM, XNet, and Bassi. So we know that Tesla had good earnings. We saw the short squeeze happen after hours. We saw the next day following the earnings that the market was quite happy with Tesla. And what a run it's had. I mean, Friday was just incredible. I mean, people sold their option calls from the earnings and made money. But wow, talk about an amazing Friday. Uh, Tesla was just on fire. I mean, we just kept looking at it, and I thought, wow, this thing's ready to break out. And uh, gave an option idea of the 310 calls. They were going for 107. At one point, those calls had pulled back to around 67 cents, 70 cents. And, um, you know, people just kept adding to it and holding because kept seeing that the stock, the volume coming through was just evident that the stock wanted to go. Um, even had the small, uh, larger trade uh, for smaller accounts, a higher strike of 315 going for 60 cents. I mean, look at the money people are making. You know, 31,000 uh, small accounts, you can see $50, $50 turned into $720. I mean, this is just amazing. I just love options for small accounts. And definitely, we were nailing every single one of these supports and resistances. And I want to just mention one thing. You know, it's easy sometimes people say to call ideas. What's not easy is you have to know supports and resistances. And I got to tell you, Jim's one of the best. And thanks to him, many people were holding their trade longer than maybe others because we were able to chart support and resistances very accurately. We had actually nailed down 320 and 325 very early in the day and also I was looking at the chart as well and said the max I could see for the day was 330 and oh my god that was the high of the day so congratulations to many people and I'd like to hear from you Jim on what we can see with Tesla because it just closed really strong and can we see maybe a potential continuation and maybe even a pullback and maybe another trading opportunity so Jim, over to you. There's always opportunity with Tesla, even when it was getting shorted through Elon Musk's tweets back at the beginning of the year. You could see it had a hard sell-off from 379.49 all the way to 176, 177. Vegas and I called this out. I pointed it out to the room. I said, you know, this thing could easily run back to 200 just in a couple of days, which it did. So, you know... I've always always had this on my watch list for the last 10 years, ever since the IPO came out. And there's always been bears that keep bashing this stock over and over and over again. There was a lot of people that got stuck shorting this into earnings. And I was saying, no, I wouldn't be looking at it like this because we already knew production was up. And, and it was already in the news. I mean, it was evident. But still, the bears were trying to bring her down. So here's is a yearly chart. This is a TTM squeeze chart that I use to follow trends. Also have my three different moving averages on here, the 9, the 34, and also the 200 EMA. So I'm always able to spot trends per day with this chart right here. I also use the linear channel. I just got so many arsenals out there that it's, it's just too many to recommend for right now. But always for a beginner, it's good to start out with this TTM trend and trying to find supports I knew from day one that that's what I had to learn and that's what I that's what I've learned and people were amazed 10 years ago how accurate I was and they're even more amazed now with the help of Vegas and her momentum plays how how these bigger tickers can be just more accurate than these pennies by far so we're going to pull it this is a 20-day chart right here I just had to clear up the board and, and try to restart drawing them I'm going to pull up the 20-day this is the linear channel that I also use sometimes hmm, can't get rid of go so I'm gonna get rid of that one then I'm gonna go straight to the TTM not that one TTM right here so we're gonna pull this up to a three-year history always repeats itself you can see we had a nice little channel for a year and a half to about a two-year period with 
it's staying above that $300 level and then dipping down and hitting that 200 on a three-year EMA chart and every time it touched that that was just a wonderful time to get in and, and go back to the bounce but then the along the tweets started coming out and he started looking like it you know probably one of my most respected Benjamin Franklin's that I've seen in a long time and I would say that would be Elon Musk I still respect the guy and he did run it up and it did hit that 200 and pull back a little bit but that's when that sell-off occurred that would have been a great time to short it but now we're back into the bull period we're above that $300 so support level is low low support is going to be right back to that 300 we've had two beautiful breakouts on this I'm going to pull this up now to a yearly show you a yearly daily we had the big gap up and it held that position at 297.59. We pulled back yesterday, Friday, to that same area, and that was a, a good support area. And she went ahead and ran up to I think it was almost it was two three hundred and thirty dollars. So I've got a red line support right now here at 220, 220.82, and I'll show you how I come up with that on a 20 day. Or let's see if I can find it on a 20 day. No, I look at here on the yearly. You can see where we had these two tops right here. So I'm still going to consider that a solid support level right there between 319 and 320. I don't want it to go any lower than that. If it does, it's going to pull back to that 310, that 309.41 maybe. And I'm going to draw another trend line right here. I see it 314. And I've traded this many a times, or at least talked about it. Now that I'm in options, I'm trading it a lot more. I just started an options account two weeks ago. So our low support for right now, we don't want it to go below 3, 320. If it does, it's going to be a very strong buy. And the resistance levels that we can take this to are going to be moving on up. We're going to have one right here, right around the 340 area. If we can get to 340 Monday, I think the market's going to open up green. Then we have a solid resistance right above it at the 345. So let me pull up the 20 day and see if I can get a better picture of this. Yeah, I kind of have to probably go back to a month. But you see where I mean by just by using that yearly chart, I come up with that 309. You can see what happened right here. It pulled up and it hit. A history always repeats. Hit that 309 and then pulled back on the 9 EMA. So it still respected that 9. And then we had that 330 high. So that's the resistance we got to break. I'm going to adjust that 330 to right about. Let me bring this up a little bit. I want to get a finer tune to it. I usually use the base of the candles, not the wicks. The wicks is a confirmation on a trend. If I draw the extended trend line out and I hit the wicks, that's just another confirmation that we're at a good spot. So we need to break the 329.56, or it's going to pull back to maybe this support level right here. I'm looking at a 322.81, or it's going to bounce off at 9 EMA on a daily one minute. So let's pull that daily one minute up right now, see if it tells us anything. These are the, just the supports I want to give you, resistances and supports I'm going to give you right now. And I see another one right here that we're going to jot in here at the 326. So our first support, 326.18. Our second one's going to be in this little channel right here between 322 and 324. And then our low support that has to hold, I would think, would be that 320.82. And it can dip on down to this previous high that we had right here. And this was just a beautiful run Friday. Pulled back just a little bit, but they were easy to call. Like the previous high right here, it pulled right back to that. So I'm always looking at the previous high when I'm drawing in a support level. And that's another double confirmation that that is a solid support. Same thing right here. The previous high, I'm going to draw me a trend line right in there for Monday. Just in case it wants to bounce off that previous high. But for right now, we want this 320.82 to break, to hold, and we want to break the 329.56 to bring it up to 333.41. And then we're going to see that 340. I think it will go higher, back to the 350 level. But a lot of big money was coming in this Friday, and I still think we have a higher leg up on it, and that's Tesla. The next one is going to be an Apple call that I made for a swing in my options challenge account. And Miss Vegas is going to talk about Apple. You know, Apple is just so good. I mean, think about the fact that it's got new 52-week highs. Earnings is coming this week as well. 
um, you know, I just want to mention about Apple. I mean, they have a version of the uh, iOS 13.2, which is coming soon. You know, they've had multiple updates on this uh, iOS 13. And, uh, you know, they had apparently four of them in beta testing. That's a lot. So hopefully they'll start, you know, finalizing that because this new feature is going to have a lot of things built in. Um, we hope to see that soon. Um, you know, there's also been some rumors about uh, Apple AirPods 3 that apparently might go on sale by the end of this month, which would technically mean this coming Thursday, the 31st. Um, apparently, these new in-ear um, AirPod 3s might be called AirPods Pro. So, um, you know, again, this is just what I'm hearing. Uh, could this come out this week? I'd love it if it did. Um, but then, you know, uh, we have to wait and see what happens. But, you know, if this comes out, I think it'll be nice timing with um, with Apple uh, also set to release earnings. The other thing, too, you know, this iOS 13.2, you know, people are like, oh, what's the big deal? But you know what? Apparently, it's going to have like 59 new emojis into that new uh, feature. Um, they're also going to have... Um, apparently a feature where you can actually share your medical health with other large scale medical studies. So apparently it's an app that, or a feature of the app that people really want uh, and they're waiting you know, with bated breath for this. So stay tuned. Um, again, AirPods 3 might be coming out. We're waiting for earnings. Can earnings be good? Of course it can. Um, we just really want to know about these earnings and guidance. And this could be an exciting week for Apple. I mean, there's a lot of momentum in the stock right now. Uh, again, anything can change. Uh, but Jim, let's hear about the Apple chart and what we can expect this week, maybe well, prior to earnings between now and then. You know, it's not just about the iPhone. It's not just about the computers. They're actually getting into a lot. And this is what I admire Tim Cook about, you know, the, the Apple TV, the Apple music. It, it just, there's... He, he's he's blended in with with what you need to to be in the now, and that's going to also bring this stock up, which we talked about before. I started an op an options challenge two weeks ago with eight hundred dollars, and so far this year, in the last two weeks, I've brought it up to six thousand one hundred ninety four dollars and forty one cents, and I've had a green I've had green days every day for the past two weeks, and right now I'm swinging Apple for an overnight swing. I, I scalped. I mean, I didn't scalp it, but I swung it from the previous day and got out of it, got in on the dip, and got back in it. I think we're going to have another run up on Apple. We are hitting kind of resistance levels. They do have a higher target for Apple at 270. I do believe we're going to see that. And I don't know about by the end of the year, but I'm always trying to find supports and things like that. So let's talk about the chart right now. We're going to pull up. The yearly chart was just beautiful, all the way down from 142, all the way up to 246.58. And Apple's had a great run here in the past 20 days, from 215 all the way to 247. I have a support level at 244.68 for to even if it wants to pull back. It's only a three dollars difference. It can pull back more to a lower support, right around 242.10. So I have three supports right here that I'm going to be calling out in the room and then if it starts to sell off pretty hard it's going to be a strong buy at 238.85 but the resistance we got to break is going to be that 247 I got a 247.67 we did break that after hours so keep an eye if you're not in the trade for the pullback to 244.68 maybe 244.95 with adjusted support level for your first support and that's going to be Apple. Like I said, I've got it in my challenge account. I'll probably scalp it first thing, in, not scalp it, but get out of it Monday and get back in it on a dip. But I'm, I'm going to follow the trend, and that's what, that's what you got to do. Don't rush yourself into any trade. Take your time. You can stop these charts at any time and write down the numbers. Just remember they come from I Love Stocks. The next one we're going to be talking about is going to be CRM, CRM, Salesforce. Salesforce. So Salesforce, you know, everyone is into um, client relationship platforms. And uh, this is very popular on CRM. And you know what? CRM, believe it or not, 
um, they're into obviously many different things. Uh, they're into the sales, the service, they're into the marketing where they help you build your pipeline to drive customer engagement. They're also into apps, developing apps for the use, your users. Um, you know, they're into many things. And the whole point is for you to find and win and keep your customers, which is what they're all about. Um, but the thing is with Salesforce, you know, uh, if you look at what's out there, um, you know, Salesforce price is a little bit behind, you know, what the competitors are at. But never, ever take your eyes off this one here because they have a lot of things going on um, coming up towards 2020. So, you know, I think it's kind of a gift that considering that they're into this uh, CRM product, um, that this price point of where it's at is a good opportunity in my opinion, because I think that come 2020, this stock is not gonna be at these levels. It's gonna be way higher. So I think they're definitely gonna be catching up uh, from a from a, you know financial perspective. And uh, I think that uh, there's more to come from CRM uh, and I won't be surprised to see this stock going into the 160s and 70s in the future. Um, but I think uh, definitely keep this one on your radar. Jim, what are your thoughts on the CRM? Well, CRM, we called out in the room about three days ago. I said we were down here at the bottom at 142.43. Mm -hmm. You can see, you can tell by the support level in this line right here, this little candle wick, right around that 142.70 something. But I lowered it just a little bit. But I spotted this thing out. Miss Vegas alerted it, and we collaborated, and we started. I got in the options trade, and I sold it the next morning. We had a pretty good little spike up. You can see the candle. How I got out right about here at 144, but she's ran up all the way to a resistance level of 150.41. Now I'm going to pull up another chart here. That's the linear. This is my TTM. We're going to bring this to a one year, get a bigger picture of it. We have a lot more ways to go on this stock. I think it's way undervalued right now. We did have a nice little five day pull, six day pullback. I have a five day rule. You know, and once that five day occurs and we had a five day sell off, I start looking at them for, for maybe a, a bounce up. You can see what happened here. Started consolidating after that five days and then we had a good five day run. And then we had a foot, another one right here where we pulled back and had a run. So we've had lower highs. That's true. But we also had higher lows. And that's true. So we're going to pull this now to the 20 day. And I look at I look at trends. I look at patterns. And I also look at momentum. And I pay attention to the news. Being in the now is what makes you a great trader. Anybody that says they don't trade in the now, that I wouldn't even pay any attention to them. So we do have a 150 resistance, 150.41. We are at 150.49 close, and, we're, and we can bring this back up to the 152.97 double top. So we got another two, $3 ride on this, $2.75. The first resistance channel is going to be 150.95 to 151.10 right in here. We might go past that Monday. But we did break the double top here on the 20-day. And that's where we kind of stopped at. We didn't quite, we broke it a little bit, but I think we need to break that double top and get up to this other new high up here. So the next one's 150.91, 151.10, 152, and then this 152.76. And as I showed you on that year chart, we can go a lot higher than that. Pullback supports are going to be these three right here. Plus, I'm going to add one right here. Bam, 148, 98, 149. And actually, it can probably stop a little bit before that. If you ever pay attention to Trend Spider, they also have a real nice alert system on their account. And we use that along with what, what I use with the TTM Squin. That's trendspider.com. Tell them we sent you there. So the resistance we got to break is going to be that 150.41 and bring it up to three more levels of highs. And that's going to be the we got to hold that 350.41 to, to bounce on up. So I can't wait to see Monday morning how this thing reacts. Give you about 15, maybe a half hour. If it jumps up on a gap, wait for the pullback and get in the trade. Run it up to 152.76. And the next one we're going to talk about is one that Miss Vegas called out with a little help from our friend George. And that's XNet. 
Yeah, so you know what? Xnet, uh, I really like the fact that it's a nice swing trade. And you know, Xnet is into, it's a, obviously a Chinese company. Um, but you know, this company is to so many things. They're into shared computing, they're into blockchain technology. They're a leading internet user in China. And definitely this one here. I mean, I like it for a swing trade as well. But I also like it from an option perspective too. And you know, from a swing trade perspective, I mean, I am looking to see this go around over the five. I think when it gets over the five, it'll look, be a little more attractive um, to the hedge fund traders and uh, or the institutions will get a lot more interested when this gets over five. Uh, I won't be surprised to see this in the six and sevens down the road. That's just my opinion. Longer term, I believe that on the stock, we saw an expansion uh, pocket pivot. We saw an expansion breakout. And I don't think that this is finished. I think XNet has more to offer us. And Jim, let's talk about this beautiful chart. That's right. This I would consider to be an uncrowded trade if I was trading it and I was watching it. We did have a low, a high of 673 on the yearly, and we did have a low of 187. I think Miss Vegas is spot on when she says this thing could probably run up to 7, 750. But I do would like to see the double top here at 673. We do have some support levels that we need to look at and consider because of the great run it had on Friday. You don't ever want to chase a trade. It is kind of showing a recession or a, a decrease in, in, the, in the after hours from the high that it closed at. And it did pop up after hours to 509. So I had a resistance at 514 that we needed to hit. And I'm always calling out these resistances on a breakout stock. I'm saying this is this one's next. And then I say it's a hard resistance. That means you either want to scale out, take some profit, or take a risk. And then I always have a solid support. And that's where you want to think about getting in. Then I always call a low, low, hard buy. And that's going to be where you definitely want to buy it at. For right now, I'm going to look at the 20-day. Pull up the 20-day chart here. In my 20-day time frame, I guess I got it on. Or Well, you idiot. Let me go to the 20 day here. There we go. So I'm looking at the 20 day. We do have a low support here at 375. That's going to be a solid buy. That's where I would probably, we had two great huge engulfing candles at the end of the day. We did have an ascending triangle breakout at that 376 area. Then we have another support level right here at 404. And I'm always using my moving averages as support levels also. And I see that 9 EMA, I'll use it on a daily one minute. And we do have another support right here at 444. So we're going to pull up the daily chart right now and take a look at it. The daily one minute is the one I look at when I'm looking for solid supports for pullbacks. And I always look, try to look for the previous highs. And that's where we are right now after hours. We did snuggle up between the, the uh, 200 the 9 and the 30 so we're getting ready to squeeze it could drop first thing in the morning and pull back to this 224 or maybe this 404 those are going to be your three different support levels and then we got another one right in here and I'm looking at where it pulled back here first and I'm going to draw a trend line right there try to get as close as I can so we got the first support channel right here at 444 to 453 the second support channel is going to be right here at 424 and then that low solid buy is going to be right in here between this little place right in here between 394 and 404. That's going to be your solid buy. And then if it decides to pull back hard, 354 is going to be your strong, strong buy. But we're getting ready to squeeze. It's going to go either way. I think it might just pull back because we had lower highs and we had higher lows. But still yet, I think it can pull back a little bit and then retrace and start to bounce back up. And that's XNet. And the resistance we got to break on XNet is going to be this top part right in here at 501. That's where it's going to be the solid resistance. If we can break that, we're going to go to new highs. And you can see that on the 20-day chart or you could follow us in the room when we're taking the trade. The next one we're going to talk about is BASI. Yes, I love Bassy. I mean, this company here, uh, you know, they had their earnings already out back in August. So they're due down the road uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, to report. But 
Um, the earnings were strong. They had a really, really good, strong fiscal 2019. Very impressed. Um, but putting that aside, I mean, this company, they're into providing contract research and monitoring instruments to pharmaceutical companies. Um, and they're looking to help them um, make decisions and improving the data and reducing the cost of taking drugs to the market. So the reason I actually like this chart, I mean, I did see this uh, pop on my scanner. Um, I really like the fact that it had a very nice close on the uh, as a 52 week high. But I also like the fact that over the last week, I mean, this stock keeps going up slowly but surely. And I think we're going to see a continuation. I mean, if you look at this, I, you know, this stock had a nice little run back in August, but then it pulled back. But basically, as of October the 1st up to now, okay, today we're at the 27th. So the, this whole month, this stock's done nothing but make higher highs. So definitely one to watch um, and keep it on your radar either for a day trade or even consider for a potential swing trade. I kind of like it for the swing, um, in my opinion. But hey, you know what? It could have a nice move during the day, just like XNet did on Friday. Um, some people day traded it, and some people kept it into Monday. So, Jim, let's hear about uh, Bassi. This was because, very. Because uh, I'm liking this chart. This is a very impressive breakout. So let's pull up the yearly first. I always like to look at that one. You know, I look at the yearly. I got this set up with the yearly and the, also the 20 day. We did have an ascending triangle breakout last week on this stock with lower highs and an equilibrium up there right around the 435 area. And she broke that. And then Friday, that's where we got that breakout. But you could see it started to squeeze. And that's one of my favorite chart patterns. We had three engulfing candles right here. And just a beautiful three white soldiers and it pulled back and it created an ascending triangle and I talk about this a lot in the room if you are ever come to the room get on voice with us I teach all day long I try to help traders that are troubled that's probably our mission statement all in all people that just can't can't get the grip we're here to try to help you out but we do have a double triple top here on on Bazzi and I think it's ready for another breakout on a yearly chart so let's pull up the the TTM squeeze and look at the yearly chart that way also so you get a bigger picture we did have a nice little sending triangle like I said and we did have the triple top and we are going to break out of that triple top it can pull back to that first resist support area and I'll pull that up on a 20 day so our low support on this stock right now is going to be right here at 412 your second support or third support I would say probably your third one going to be at 420. We have a 427, and then we have that first resistance or support level right here at 435 with a resistance to break at 442. And these are 52 week highs. So you can see we set up pretty good, and we do going to have another triple top on it come Monday. And if it does pull back and break up to that triple top, I don't can't see it. I mean, I can see it going to 435 real easy. And I can see a strong buy at 412 if it decides to knife and people want to get out of the trade. Remember, this is uncrowded, so just don't be patient with it. But this was a beautiful setup here on, on, on this ascending triangle, and I point these out. This is my favorite pattern to play off of, and it's just one to watch, one to keep in mind. And I point these out daily in the room. I say, we're good, setting up. You can raise squeeze. You know, if you're not in the trade, you might want to jump in it right now and scalp it real fast to the next resistance. That's BASI. And that's it for the aftermarket report. And do appreciate Vegas's input through the options channel. She's, she's tr helped me tremendously. She got me convinced that I can go ahead and start a challenge. And I started that challenge two weeks ago. And you just want people to come in here and follow us and learn how to trade these things. And do penny stocks we do we're all around group and it seems like every day we hang together we get better miss vegas yeah i just want to mention i mean this challenge account's been phenomenal i mean i'm so glad that jim finally took that you know took up the idea and said you know what i'm gonna go for mm -hmm. it and he started his challenge account uh like he said uh two weeks ago with eight hundred dollars now over six thousand dollars i mean that is just a phenomenal rate of return over you know 500 600 percent 
in such a short time span. What I'm liking so far with what Jim's doing is he takes his time to buy these option contracts. He doesn't buy them and then flip them. He buys them, holds them, swings them, and then, you know, exits when the profits are there. So I love his strategy. Um, it's great for building an account. And one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a separate video specifically regarding op uh, Jim's options challenge and do updates on a regular basis on how it's going. Um, only because people have been messaging me and saying that they're interested to learn and, and hear about the option challenge in particular. So rather than, you know, combine it with a watch list, we'll do a separate video for that. So for those of you interested in just the option challenge updates, uh, Jim will be doing a separate video on that probably on a weekly basis. So definitely subscribe and follow uh, and set up the alerts button on the YouTube so that you can get alerted when he does release these videos. So great results. I'm looking forward to this week. I can't wait for Jim to hit that 10,000 and the next goal after that's going to be a hundred thousand. And then we want to go for a million, but first let's, you know, do baby steps. We have the vision, we have the goal. Jim's motivated and it's just so exciting to see. And I'm just loving every day when he keeps telling me the updates, it's just so amazing. And I'm so have a great weekend. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys. So, you know, tomorrow's Monday. So I'm excited for tomorrow. Jim, any last words to say before we yeah, go? Yeah, and I'll be totally transparent with this count. I'm going to uh, show how I play it every day in the room. So if you want to follow, I cost average down on trades that go down on me. I double up on them. And it's just been a success working it that way. I don't recommend cost averaging down to a lot of traders that don't know exactly yet. But I feel confident, and every time I do it, I got a 95% accuracy rating by doing the cost average down. I've only lost two trades since I've started the options doing it that way, and they were, you know, pretty big losses, less than a thousand. But this count was down four thousand dollars, and I said I've just told myself a couple weeks ago I'm gonna put this last 800 in here, and if I don't get it right, I'm not gonna do it anymore. And well, I think I found. Everybody has a strategy. You got to find your own strategy. And this is my strategy, and I'm going to be very transparent on this way out. So, we do appreciate everybody watching the videos. Please hit that subscribe and ring that bell. If you want to join the room, we do have a website, and you can follow here in the chat room service. We do have Twitter link, we have Stock Twits links, Pinterest, our YouTube channel, and also we sell merchandise if you're interested in merchandise also. This is I Love Stocks, and we love stocks.